Hello everyone, I've got a 2.0 walkthrough video of how to use Borza. In this video, we're going to be using the Dark Templar and the Corsairs. We're going to be playing on the Lock and Load mission on Brutal Difficulty. Okay, so for Power Set 1, we've got everything in Dark Pylon range. For Power Set 2, we've got everything in Time Stop Unit Speed Increase. Let me know in the comments if you think Shadow Guard Duration is better in this case. I'm going to go with Time Stop Unit Speed Increase for this video though. Okay, and then for Power Set 3, we've got everything in Chrono Boost Efficiency. Okay, alright, and then if we run into too many air units, it's like mainly an air army, we're going to throw in a lot of Dark Archons or Stalkers. Those will be our AA. And then we also have to use some of these Oracles for detection. That is pretty much the only way you get detection with uh, Vorazen unless you're using Photon Cannons. Okay, let's get it started. All right, it looks like our teammate is going to be a Karax player. The name will be Chef, and this person is Mastery Level 39. Hopefully, our teammate uses the defense style while playing as Karax. That would be incredibly beneficial because it's really great when you capture a lock that your teammate places defenses around that lock, and then you don't have to worry about losing it at that point. But we'll see what happens. Okay, so what I'm going to be focusing on is getting these uh, assimilators on both of these Vespin geysers right away. And then, once we have the assimilators, then I will uh, throw down our first pylon here. Okay, there we go. So, the reason for this is because you want to invest... I mean, these guys are automated. You don't have to use any probes on gathering any gas. And, you know, most of you already know this, but it's it's a good good investment. Just pay the extra minerals right at the start, and then you don't have to worry about getting that gas later. And you're going to have just a huge surplus. And because the Dark Templar and the Corsairs are pretty gas-heavy, it's a gas-heavy uh, army composition, especially if you throw in those uh, Dark Archons, you, you definitely want to be able to get it right from the get-go. Okay, and I think what I'm going to do here is... Yeah, I think we'll do something like this. Go, go ahead and uh, cloak our teammates, give them some help. There we go. And just look how wide this, this uh, uh, circle is. The diameter on this circle is huge for the range of the Dark Pylon. Now my entire uh, allies base is cloaked. That's great. And I think we got some extra uh, supply from that actually, because it's a pylon, you know? <laughs> of course you would, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is throw down a gateway and a forge. I was really slow about that because I got distracted. And then I'm going to throw down a pylon. Well, actually, you know what we're going to do? I think, I think we're actually just going to hold off. We're going to save up our energy this time. And I'm going to use a deploy shadow guard to clear out these rocks. I could be getting my Nexus a little bit sooner, maybe, if I threw down... Yeah, we're going to cancel that Forge. I don't even want the Forge. If I threw down that Forge sooner, I could throw down those pylons and start clearing out these rocks. But I think what we're going to do is just save up for the, the, the Shadow Guard and then clear it out. Okay, so as soon as we get this Gateway, we're going to start spending all of our resources here. Throw down some extra Gateways since we have extra supply right now. Okay, I'm going to throw down the Cybernetics Core. And then I will throw down another pylon here. We're going to need extra supply. And then I think we'll throw down another pylon right there. And this is really good timing. So what we'll do is we'll use our uh, shadow guard on these rocks here. And then we're going to throw our center uh, shadow guard up, up towards this enemy wave right away after these rocks are gone. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, let's see here. I might be able to clear out these rocks on my gas as well. Okay, oh, come on. Understood. We shall endeavor okay. to secure it shortly. Okay, we're gonna send those guys up there, and then I think I'm gonna use time stop as well. Okay, we'll get the Nexus thrown down here. Okay, and I'm just gonna stop these guys. Oh, they captured it anyway. That's okay. We'll still clear them out. We've got time stop going. So we won't have to worry about our uh 
Uh, Shadow Guard dying because none of these guys, these roaches are going to be able to attack us. Oh, and I lost my Shadow Guard. Well, that's okay. Okay, and then we're going to throw down the automated assimilators again. And we're going to start getting a uh, warp gate upgrade for our gateways. And we're going to throw down a ton of these gateways here. Just because we have so many resources right now. Okay, and then I'm going to throw down a uh, Twilight Council. That's going to allow us to get our Dark Shrine. And then I will also throw down a Stargate. And I don't advise playing how I'm playing right now. I am literally just throwing down as much as I can <laughs> to spend these resources. And thank goodness my teammate had Orbital Strike. That was nice. Otherwise I would have had to create some units there. Okay, we've got a warp gate uh, research now, so we can start turning all of our gateways into warp gates, so that'll be great. Okay, and then we will throw down our Dark Shrine since the Twilight Council just finished, and then we throw uh, two gateways right in front of that as well. So what we're going to do with all these extra minerals that we're uh, gathering, if we don't have any gas to compensate for them, is we're going to throw down a ton of zealots. Zealots are going to be our sponge if we cannot uh, compensate for all the extra minerals we have. Okay, and then I really need to focus on saturating both of these supply lines now. Oh, geez, and we just got Chrono Wave, so I might as well just cap out our... <laughs> yeah, that was great. We just had Chrono Wave, so it didn't even matter that I wasn't building probes. That was great, because uh, Chrono Wave increases your production of units by, like, what, 100%, 200%? So that was huge. Okay. Okay, we're just really focusing on getting this economy going, and then we'll worry about... Once we've got our economy going, then we'll worry about building the army. Okay, so we've got all of this saturated, and our expansion is saturated. I'm just going to build one extra pylon for good measure. And we're going to start getting the Shadow Fury ability that allows your a Dark Templar to jump from unit to unit five times, and you do 20 damage with each one of those jumps. Okay, and I'm going to throw down a bunch of these Dark Templar at my enemies or <laughs> allies' expansion. We'll help out our teammate here. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and start clearing out these rushes. My uh, Dark Templar are going to take damage. I think I even lost one right there. But you have an ability you unlock at like level 14 or 15, something like that. And that allows, as long as your Dark Templar don't die more than uh, twice in 60 seconds, they can uh, respawn. You get them back. You don't get the health back, but you do get the shields. The shields do recover over time. Okay. If you are playing with someone like Raynor, you can then start recovering. Start recovering those uh, sh uh, health as well if your teammate has medics. Or playing with, like, for example, Avatar if you have the mend ability or queens. Works out quite well. Okay, and I will have upgrades for my uh, Dark Templar pretty quick here. I'm actually going to Chrono Boost this Dark Shrine, get those upgrades a little bit faster. Okay, and then I'll throw all my Forge into a Hockey Dark Shrine into Hockey number 9. Uh, Fleet Beacon, I'm going to throw that in Hockey 8. We have to get the Fleet Beacon for the Corsairs upgrades. Okay. And I think I'm actually going to build some more gateways right here. We're just kind of building a wall so if the enemy wave does come, it doesn't go for my probes right away. Okay, there we go. Okay. Then we're going to throw these gateways into our uh, hockey. Okay, we have this activated, so that's great. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think I'm going to throw down another dark pylon at this expansion here. Get some cloaking. Yeah, I'll be able to cloak uh, most of my allies' defenses now. That's good. Okay, and we're going to throw down a bunch more of these Dark Templar. And I am going to start getting the uh, Blink... Well, actually, I'm going to get Void Stasis. That pretty much takes... What Void Stasis does, it, it takes an enemy structure or enemy unit out of action for 10 seconds. They can't be attacked or they cannot attack either. Oh no, my Corsair! I lost one of my Corsairs there, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, we're going to black hole these guys. Okay, and then I'm going to start getting ground weapons level 2. And I need to start getting uh, disruption web. And what that does is that completely uh, 
disables it does you can attack enemy units in the disruption web that uh, these corsairs can drop and um, what it does is it disables the units from attacking it does not disable the unit from moving okay and when I throw it on two stargates I think that's a good choice because oh no I took away my hockey shoot okay so what we're gonna do is get all of these uh, warp gates selected again there we go okay uh oh I don't have them all selected still okay we're gonna have to do that one more time there we go okay okay but yeah that disruption disruption web ability that allows you to completely deactivate the attacks of an enemy and you can attack the enemy so that's the that's the plus of using disruption web and that's why it makes this army composition so strong okay we're gonna use time stop ability and clear out this whole lock this will be real quick. And then another great thing about using this army composition is that uh, Vorzun, Vorzun actually, uh, her units when they're cloaked actually gain increased damage. And that's another reason why you should use this cloaking ability. So if your unit, if your, uh, I believe it's all of your units and all of your allies' units gain like 15% increased attack damage. I believe that's what it is. So, might as well get as much cloaking as you can. And then if you have units that aren't cloaked, on like your own units, not just your allies' units, then those units gain increased damage as well. So if you have like Zealots, for example. Just another great way of gaining extra damage. Okay. And then uh, someone confirmed that in the comments. I'm pretty sure it affects your allies as well. I know it, I know it works for all of your units, but I'm pretty sure it helps your allies, ally as well. Okay, we're gonna pump out a bunch of these Corsairs now. Okay, and then we're gonna jump on this enemy wave here. Okay, I think we're gonna, oh shoot, I didn't throw down a, here, we'll throw down a dark pylon once our teammate starts building there. There we go. Ah, uh, look at that disruption web ability. Those Hydralisk and Roaches couldn't even attack. It was wonderful. Okay, we're using a ton of our gas, so now we're gonna start spawning a bunch of these Zealots. Oh, and something I should point out, I am not focusing on getting the... Okay, we're going to get armor level 1 right here. I should have got that sooner, but I'm not focusing on getting the air upgrades for our Corsairs, because if you see this, they only do 5 damage. And they have that upgraded by 0.75 uh, because of the cloak. They're cloaked now because I got the upgrade to cloak them. And then for uh, versus light... They do 11.5 damage, increased by 1 point, 10 damage normally, and then increased to 1.5, 11.5 I mean, because of cloaking. But it, their damage is so minimal, I just don't worry about upgrading their damage, unless I have a lot of extra resources. So I'd rather just upgrade my Zealots, because those are going to be uh, filling the filler for all these extra minerals I have. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get Intercept for the Zealots, and then we're going to get uh, Dark Coil. And then that's going to allow our Centurions to... Dark Coil allows our, in, our Centurions to stun the enemy nearby units. Nearby, stun nearby enemy units. There we go. Okay. And then since we have a ton of Warp Gates and a ton of extra minerals, we're going to spawn a bunch of these Zealots. Okay. Now our army's starting to get pretty big. In a sec here, we will start moving out. I want to make a bunch more pylons, though, because I don't want to get supply blocked before we get there. Okay, alright, so we're just going to go ahead and cap this. As soon as we cap this, then we're going to throw down our time stop ability. And we're going to go ahead and clear out the next lock. Okay, we want to make sure to be keep getting our upgrades here. Okay, oh, I want to get a couple oracles. oracles. I haven't done that yet. We do want detection. I think our teammate has been covering the detection needs for us, which is really nice. But we do want to stay on top of that. And I'm going to get the blink ability for our Dark Templar just in case, just in case we feel like using it. Okay, I think we're sitting okay there. This wave is not causing us really any problems either. Okay, and it's awesome because our teammate has uh, shield batteries and they're repairing the Dark Pylon. None of these defenses are taking damage. It's, it's working out really well. This is a great, great combo. Karax and uh, uh, Vorazun. 
And I have I haven't actually been really focusing on using this strategy with Vorazin before, so I'm I'm really liking it right now. Okay, we're gonna throw down a couple of these stasis words. These stasis words can actually be really beneficial if you can use them effectively, but I'm not doing that right now. So uh, stasis words will deactivate all the enemy units trapped in their little uh, the little circle that forms. Yeah, let's see here. Once activated by an enemy ground unit, the ward traps nearby enemies in the stasis for 15 seconds. So that's another way to disable all the enemy units in a, in a select area. So it's, it's really good if you set it up. So if you like bait the enemy into it, that's probably the best way to do it. So I'll, I'll kind of show you guys. You really can make good use of this in battle. I'm just kind of like setting it up for you guys right now. But you can definitely do better than I'm doing right now. Oh, okay. It's, it's, we're not, oh, well, we got some of the units there, but we're just going to go ahead and throw it on time stop and clear out everything. There we go. As you can see, this disruption web ability is just so overpowered. And then, you know, plus Dark Templar are already really strong. Let's look at the damage of our Dark Templar. With upgraded damage, they're at 60, plus 8.99 damage increase from uh, having the cloaking ability, uh, the cloaking damage upgrade. That's huge. Okay, we're going to call down Black Hole ability on these units here. And start killing those guys real quick. Okay, oh jeez, I did not realize the huge uh, mineral surplus I had. Okay. We're going to clear this out. Oh, and I don't have any detection over here. That's no good. Okay, I'll send my oracles over there, and then we'll keep on clearing out all the stuff over here. We do want to get this lock. <laughs> Looks like our teammate is clearing out the enemy base. Okay, there we go. Okay, so a good way to actually, this would be really helpful. Okay, so this is a good way to use the stasis word ability. If you have these enemy waves kind of sneaking up on you like that, set up a bunch of these stasis wards to trap that enemy until you can uh, get over there and help help out your teammate. Okay, hopefully our uh, teammate helps us capture this lock. Yeah, there we go. Teammate woke up. Okay, oh, we got Chrono Wave, and I didn't even realize it. Shoot. Okay, I'm going to make sure to get Armor Level 2, and then uh, Shields Level 3. Yeah, here we go. We got Shields Level 3 in this one. Okay, we've got all of our Dark Templar upgrades, all of the Corsairs upgrades. Um, let's see here. Stasis, Collaboration. Enemies affected by the Oracle Stasis Ward can now be attacked. That's a good upgrade. So, I did not realize that was an upgrade until just now. So, we're going to go ahead and get that one. I think that's really beneficial. Okay, and I think we're gonna throw down a dark pylon here. We'll allow cloaking to affect all these defenses, or defenses and our allies units. Okay, we'll go ahead and get this enemy wave also. Ah, uh, look at these broodlords. But as you can see, these broodlords, they're not taking a whole lot of damage from our, our uh, Corsairs. They just don't do very much damage. It's a bummer, honestly. Okay, we'll go ahead and clear these guys out. Uh oh, don't want my oracles to die here. Come on, get out of there. Oh no. Oh no. Lots of area damage. Okay, we gotta keep our air units back for a second. We'll get that infester. There we go. Okay, and we'll go ahead and clear out the rest of this stuff. Okay, there we go. Doing pretty good. We should be able to handle this bonus without really worrying. Okay, and you know what, we're just going to call down time stop so this bonus objective can't even do any more damage to us. There, time stop, clearing out the bonus objective without it even doing damage to our units, that's wonderful. Okay, now we only have one uh, one lock left. We already got the bonus objective. You can just really see how overpowered Vorazin is if you play this strategy, it's quite fantastic. Okay, uh, we don't need to get that upgrade because that's for the Void Rays. Oh geez, and I actually have lost a lot of units. You know what, we're gonna back off for a second so I can rebuild. Rebuild our army up a little bit. I don't need any more uh, Corsairs, but I definitely do want some more Oracles. I think that'll be a good investment. Holy cow, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is coming at us? Okay, we're gonna spawn a bunch of Zealots. We need some reinforcements here. That was a big nasty wave. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, they destroyed our pylon. That was a bummer. Okay, we're gonna spawn all of our zealots over here. All of my zealots just got absolutely destroyed. Just about to warp in and then boom, dead. Oh, that was a bummer. Okay, we'll go ahead and finish out these mule lists. 
I mean, these Corsairs, they do a decent amount of damage, you know, but yeah, still, it's just, it's not a lot. I mean, look how long it's taken to kill these Broodlords. And I have how many Corsairs? Uh, let's see here, 10, 13, I have 13 Corsairs. And even if I upgraded them, I mean, which I could, which I could actually. You know what, we have way too many minerals and gas, so I could. But I, I just really don't think it's worth it. You know, it's... It's it's a preference thing, I guess. I mean, if you want that extra damage, but I would just I would just if you really need anti-air, I would throw in stalkers or uh, dark dark archons. If you if you don't have a whole lot of gas, then I would throw in uh, stalkers. Stalkers are very cheap, and if you have other units to distract the enemy units, then you'll be fine. You, I mean, your stalkers won't die. If, if your enemy's army is really air heavy, then you might actually have to switch your strategy. Because you really do not have any any anti-air units in this army composition. I mean, the Corsairs, like I said many times, they do do air damage, but it's so minimal, it doesn't really count. Okay, and then we use Black Hole here. We're going to want to spawn another one of these Dark Pylons, because I think we're going to lose that one. Ah. We did not lose it thanks to the reconstruction beam that Karax has. Okay, I think we have all of our forge upgrades. Yes, we do. We can get our uh, next air weapon damage upgrade. Not that it matters because we completely have this covered. Yeah, it looks like our teammate completely wiped the enemy base. There's still another en enemy base up here, up uh, northwest, but not that it matters. Hmm, Northwest, that sounds familiar. Alright, so there you have it. I hope that helped everyone. I, I definitely find this strategy to be very fun. And you can use those uh, stasis ward abilities that the oracles have. Definitely use those uh, more effectively than I did. If you use them right, you can really set up, like a landmine, a bunch of landmines basically. Set a minefield for your base and then trap the enemies. And if you get that upgrade from the fleet beacon, then you can do damage to those units that are in the stasis ward, and it holds them for 15 seconds. How awesome is that? 15 seconds is more than enough for your units to travel across the map. And uh, something that I did not use, I did not use the recall ability for these uh, dark pylons. That is something you really want to make good use of, and I completely forgot about this. I just remembered it now. But yeah, the recall ability for the dark pylons just warp across the map wherever you have those dark dark pylons. It's not as good as a Kerrigan's Nidus Worms, I don't think, but it's definitely a good way to get from one place to another, especially if you have those stasis wards set up. You can freeze the enemy and then warp to the other side of the map and then get the enemy. And you know, I could probably make another video on just just using the, the dark pylon uh, recall ability and uh, the stasis ward ability with those oracles. I could probably make a good, good walkthrough through, through a good walkthrough for that as well if you guys would like to see that but yeah i hope this was helpful for all of you thanks so much for watching and if you have any questions post it in the comments